Ladies and gentlemen, right now we're going to head down to the Winner's Circle where Maggie Wolfendale is standing by with a very special guest. That's right, Johnny. I'm joined by another Johnny, and that's the 143rd winning jockey of this year's Kentucky Derby. Johnny Velasquez aboard, always dreaming. Johnny, you won it for the guy that you've had so much success with in the past and, and through the years. You and Todd are just the dream team. And how special was it for you to finally win the Kentucky Derby for him? Uh, definitely very special. And uh, like I said before, we had so much success in, uh, for so many years and in so many big races, uh, but not having to win a, a Kentucky Derby was something that I was missing. And, and fight to get it done with them is very special. And also take us through the race a little bit. I mean, you were just cool as a cucumber, and there was a lot of talk that, you know, going into the race at Always Dreaming, he was a bit rank in the morning. There was speculation he might be that way on race day, but he wasn't. He just relaxed perfectly for you uh, towards the front end. Now, uh, um, you know, I know he was being strong and galloping uh, uh, prior to the race, and I went to breeze him, and so I know a little bit that I was... What I, was, I was expecting what he was going to do, um, but in this kind of race, you, know, you got to play a little bit different than what we do in the morning. You know, first of all, I let him run uh, out of the gate to the, to the out of the gate just to get a good position going to that first turn. And once I got the position I got, uh, passing the uh, passing the wire, I, I was very comfortable the way he was doing it, uh, and he was really relaxed. I didn't have to be fighting against him, and he was in a place where he's very comfortable and made me feel comfortable. You also look pretty comfortable coming towards the end, towards the finish line. Looked as though you still had something left in the tank. Does that give you a lot of confidence heading into Baltimore in two weeks? He sure did. I'll tell you what, when he came down the lane, uh, he went to prick the gears up, and I would give it a little stop in the shoulder, and I made him switch the lead on the stretch. And once he's switching, and I, I asked him, he responded right away. And I was really happy the way he actually responded when, when I asked him to do something. And uh, I was like, they're going to have to really run hard to get him, you know, because he started getting in a good rhythm and, and a nice straight, uh, straight away down, down the lane. I was pretty happy the way he was doing it. And, Johnny, some people know this and some people don't, but you have a special piece of equipment that you ride these big races in that also belong to a Hall of Famer as well as yourself. Talk a little bit about your saddle. Yeah, I inherited this saddle from Angel when he retired in 1992, and uh, it's a special saddle that he rode for so many years, and he won a few derbies, when I think three derbies that he won, won with the saddle and, and a couple of uh, the, his previous cup. I inherited the saddle, two derbies with me, and it's one, I don't know, maybe I won 13 Breeders' Cup, maybe around 10 or 11 Breeders' Cup with that saddle. So it's a special thing that we, we carry for a long time, and uh, I'm glad that I inherited it. <laughs> well, you were uh, laid with the roses uh, going into the Kentucky Derby winner's circle. Johnny, from the, all of us here at Nyer, congratulations, and we hope you see, you see you in the first weekend here in June as well, Board Always Dreaming. You know, hopefully the horse comes out of the race well and goes into the pregnancy, and hopefully he wins it so we can bring it here to, to our hometown. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back at home, Johnny. Congrats again. Thank you very much.